Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 Season 27 video on the best builds. In this video, we're going to take a look at the top 10 best builds that you can play in Season 27 for Solo Greater Rift Pushing, and we're going to group about 50 of the top builds in this game into a tier list of their relative power. This video is brought to you in collaboration with the Diablo 3 experts over at MaxRoll.gg, where a think tank of some of the top Diablo 3 players, whose names you'll be seeing topping the leaderboards, combine their brain power, play experience, and the power of mathematics to figure out what the best builds of Season 27 will be. So let's move into the tier list itself and put up the Season 26 tier list to compare what has changed. As a refresher, our tiers are measured in terms of relative power compared to S tier. S tier builds are the best builds in the game. They're the ones that push the highest GRs, they're going to be all pushing 150 by the end of season and in the fastest times. Now the key here again though is relative power. So if you personally can clear a GR 100 with a B tier build, then with an S tier build you can expect to clear about a 110. Now season 27 is a power creep season. We see the introduction of sanctified items. We have a full video with a breakdown on sanctified items and all their powers right over here. But in short, in season 27, there's going to be a new item drop called an angelic crucible, similar to a Ramaladni's gift. You take this item, you right click and you apply it to an existing item. This will re-roll that item with the stats of a perfect ancient, a primal. The stats will be randomized, but they're going to be maxed out like a primal. Additionally, you're going to get one of three legendary powers depending on your class. It'll be random. These are called the sanctified legendary powers, and you can only have one sanctified item equipped at a time. Now, not all builds benefit equally from sanctified items. Some benefit a whole lot, others don't benefit at all. Some sanctified powers are really strong, others are rather weak. So most of the movement you're going to see on the tier list is all because of sanctified items. If a build barely benefits from sanctified items, it's probably going to drop a tier. If it benefits an average amount, it'll stay where it is. And if it benefits a lot, it's going to rise a tier. Now some changes were made to some of the sanctified powers after the test server phase ended. So there might be some surprises for us when we launch season. We'll go over through the tier list what things might change. We're making conservative estimates for things that we're not sure about, but do stay tuned for an update to the tier list on maxroll.gg if things pan out differently from what was predicted. Now, in addition to sanctified powers, we also got quite a few balance changes that also shake up the meta in some ways. You're going to see some sets that were reworked. There's one big nerf that people are sad about, and there's some other buffs to freshen things up. Now, as a reminder, a red arrow means a build has dropped a tier. A green arrow means a build rose a tier. Two red arrows means a drop of at least two tiers. And two green arrows means a rise of at least two tiers. If you see a little sack, that means the build uses a set that's part of a Hadrix gift. And a star means a build that is new to the tier list. So diving into the Season 27 tier list, we're going to start with the F tier. F as in... Feel like we can probably just move right on to the next tier. F tier builds are more than 20 greater rifts behind S tier, and they're barely clinging to the term viable. Here we still have the Arakir Chicken Dock meme build, but we also have the Natalia Fan of Knives build that has dropped down because the only sanctified power that it can work in, the sanctified vengeance power, just launches extra rockets while you're in Vengeance, which is an extremely weak sanctified power. Now you'll notice that the Tragul Bloodlance build has disappeared from this tier. In fact, it's disappeared from the tier list entirely because Tragul got reworked this season and we'll have some great news for Necro players in a few minutes. So moving on to the D tier, D as in definitely not topping the leaderboards. D tier builds cap out at about 20 Greater Rifts behind the best builds in the game. They are certainly viable, but for Greater Rift pushing, there are far better options. Dropping down into this tier, we have two Demon Hunter Hungering Arrow builds, which can only work in the Sanctified Vengeance power. Hanging on to the very bottom of D tier are the Pestilence Corpse Lance Necromancer and the Legacy of Dreams Rat Mage Necromancer. Both these builds can make use of the Sanctified Golem power, which makes your Golem pick up and store corpses around you. It can store up to 30 corpses, 
and lets you cast Corpse Explosion, Corpse Lance, or Revive as if you were consuming the maximum number of corpses the skill can consume per cast. It also combines nicely with Devour Devouring Aura. For speedrunning, this is a nice little buff, because you can drop Land of the Dead, but for Greater Rift Pushing, you cannot afford to drop Land of the Dead. It's too powerful, so the Golem Power barely helps. And that takes us to C tier. C as in... See you next season, hopefully. Buffs? C tier builds are up to 15 Greater Rifts behind S tier. Again, these are perfectly viable. You can complete your season journey with these builds, but they're just outclassed by the best builds. For the Barbarian, the Immortal King Charge build remains in C tier because it benefits nicely from the Sanctified Wrath of the Berserker power, which effectively doubles your damage. For the Crusader, both the Roland Sweep build and the Legacy of Dreams Blessed Shield build have no specific sanctified power that is useful to them. However, there's one sanctified power that can make or break any Crusader build. Sanctified Falling Sword. When you cast Falling Sword, two Archangels spawn, and they deal damage to enemies, and during the PTR testing phase, these Archangels were dealing absurd amounts of damage. Every Crusader set was topping leaderboards with Archangels just doing all the work. Now, after PTR, in the final patch notes, the Archangels received a nerf. But it's unclear in practice exactly how significant the nerf is. We know that their damage is decreased by a percentage, but it also seems to have affected their rate of attack, which we're not able to measure until we can test when the season goes live. So the Crusader's position this season will be dependent on these Archangels. We're using a conservative estimate with all Crusader builds that are using the Archangels for now, but rest assured that the tier list on maxroll.gg will be updated if it turns out that these Archangels are still super powerful. Now it should also be noted that in the case of these two builds that we just discussed, they don't normally have Falling Sword worked into them, so you have to sacrifice a skill in order to work in Falling Sword to gain these Archangels. We'll also note that Rollins is the starter set for Crusader this season, and it's one of the weaker starters. Then for the Demon Hunter, the Legacy of Dreams Rapid Fire build uses the mediocre Sanctified Vengeance power and drops into C tier, while the N6M4 Cluster Arrow build, that's 6-piece Natalia, 4-piece Marauder, uses the Sanctified Cluster Arrow power, which concentrates your cluster munitions into a piercing ray of light and that allows the build to remain in C tier. The Monk's Sun Wuko Lashing Tail Kick build drops down from B tier because there's not a single useful sanctified power for the build. And the same holds true for the Necromancer's Bone Spear build and the Inarius Poison Scythe build. Then the Inarius Corpse Explosion build can use the sanctified Golem power, but only for speedruns, as we previously explained. For the Witch Doctor, the Arakir Firebats build drops to C tier because the only sanctified power it can use is Sanctified Haunt, which pulls enemies together very tightly, very useful for dealing damage to big groups at a time. And this power also summons a deadly Bogodile, which was completely broken on PTR, similar to Crusader's Angels, but arguably even worse. Every Witch Doctor build, every Witch Doctor set was just using Bogodiles to destroy everything smashing GR-150s. We're assuming that this was fixed. It was not in the patch notes, but it seems like it was a bug that was making this happen. We're just gonna assume it's been fixed. Otherwise, Witch Doctors are the best class of Season 27. Again though, because we don't know what the final balance of Bogadal will look like, we're making conservative estimates here. So do check back when the season starts for any potential changes. Then for the Wizard, the Typhon Hydra build drops into C tier, because the Sanctified Power it uses, the Storm Armor Sanctified Power, is just mediocre. In practice, it basically lets you, once every 30 seconds, zap an enemy for a considerable amount of damage. Remaining in C tier is the Talrasha Frozen Orb build, which gets a good damage boost out of the Sanctified Arcane Orb Power, which spawns up to four orbiting charges around you, and one is consumed every time you fire an orb, basically letting you get two for one. And that takes us to the B tier. B as in... Boy, that's a lot of red arrows. B tier builds are up to 10 Greater Rifts behind S tier. Here we have three Barbarian builds remaining in this tier, both the Leap Quake and Seismic Slam flavors of Might of the Earth, which both use the Sanctified Whirlwind power to pixel pull enemies into super tight groupings right before you either leap or Seismic Slam on them, allowing you to do massive area damage. And there's also the Frenzy Barbarian, which uses the Sanctified Wrath of the Berserker power to basically double your damage. For Crusaders, I will repeat the issue with the Archangel Sanctified Power. It might turn out incredibly good or just mediocre. 
For the Invoker Thorns build and the Blessed Hammer build, however, it's the best option. You may wonder why not use the Sanctified Blessed Hammer skill for the Blessed Hammer build. Well, the Blessed Hammer Sanctified Power makes your Blessed Hammers travel in a straight line rather than swirl around you, which makes it really difficult to pair with Hammer Jammers, which provide a 5 times damage buff to enemies that you land among when you Falling Sword. So you Falling Sword down, land among a group of enemies, those enemies around you are going to take a ton more damage, and when you throw a hammer, it swirls around you, hitting them all. With this power, you throw a hammer and it shoots out ahead of you. Because of this, the Archangel power is just more useful. And it's also a natural pairing because you already are using Falling Sword with this build. Unlike other Crusader builds, you don't have to sacrifice a skill slot to work in the Archangels. Also dropping down into C tier is the Crusader's Akan Invoker Bombardment build, which has no useful sanctified power and cannot afford to work in the Falling Sword Angels. For Demon Hunters, the Natalia Rapid Fire build and the G.O.D. Hungering Arrow build drop from the top of B tier and now cling to the bottom of the tier, as they could only benefit from the sanctified Vengeance power. But it's great news for Unhallowed Essence Multishot, which rises from the C tier thanks to the power of the sanctified Strafe power, which makes Strafe cast your last cast non-channeled Hatred Spender. Basically, you shoot multi-shot, and then you just hold strafe, and multi-shots shoot out of you everywhere. This completely changes the playstyle of the build. Instead of sitting in place and shooting, or shooting, stepping back, stutter stepping, shoot, step, shoot, step, shoot, step, you are just shooting uninterrupted while strafing and moving around. Huge buff to this build. Not only does this increase our rate of fire, the number of multi-shots we're getting out, but now we can also work in multipliers that are based on channeled powers. Oh, and the best part, Unhallowed Essence is the starter set for Demon Hunters this season, so you can dive right into it. For Monks, both Tempest Rush builds drop to B tier because they can't work in any sanctified power, and the Inner Monk craters down from S tier into B tier due to a nerf to the build, plus a relatively useless sanctified power. The Way of the Hundred Fist power, which basically just lets us apply our Stricken faster, for purposes of this build. Then the Necromancer's Legacy of Dreams Poison Scythe build can't really benefit from any angelic power and thus drops to B tier, but it's better news for Witch Doctors. The Helltooth Zombie Bears build can work in the Sanctified Horrify power to get a 100% damage buff, letting it stay in B tier. The Helltooth Gargantuan build rises from the C tier by working in the Sanctified Gargantuan power, which doubles the number of Gargantuans, which doubles our damage, and lets us generate infinite zombie dogs to sacrifice on enemies while giving us another double damage buff to enemies hit by sacrificed dogs. Both these builds use the Helltooth set, which is the starter set for Witch Doctors this season. So you have a couple decent starter options for the Witch Doctor. Meanwhile, Jade Harvester, which was close to the top of B tier last season, is now near the bottom. It works in the Sanctified Haunt power, which again will pixel pull enemies tightly together. And again, we repeat the disclaimer about the Bogodile. We're assuming it was nerfed, but in theory it still might be crazy strong. We'll find out when season launches. As for the Legacy of Dreams Spirit Barrage Witch Doctor, this build benefits even more from the pixel pulling power of the Sanctified Haunt, dealing incredible burst damage with its phantasms. Then for the Wizard, the Firebird Flame Blades build and the Firebird Explosive Blast builds drop to B tier because they can't fit any Sanctified Power in at all. While the Veer Chan Toto build and Legacy of Dreams Hydra build use the mediocre Storm Armor Sanctified Power and drop as well. The Veer Reverse Archon build drops from its cozy spot in the middle of A tier to the top of B tier, using the Sanctified Arcane Orb Power to sometimes get extra Frozen Orbs. Meanwhile, the two DMO builds remain in B tier. The Twister build works in the Storm Armor Sanctified Power and drops from the top too close to the bottom of B tier, Whereas the DMO Frozen Orb build uses the Frozen Orb Sanctified Power to rise from the very bottom of B tier to the top of the tier. And that leads us into our top 10 builds. Yes, our top 10 actually starts in B tier this season. So coming in at number 10, we have the Firebird Magic Missile Wizard build. While it's not the strongest wizard build on our list, it's a new build that emerges thanks to the Magic Missile Sanctified Power of Season 27. And it's really fun. The power makes Magic Missile fire out 10 magic missiles at a time. And they all have the Seeker rune, so you're shooting out 10 rapid fire, super rapid fire, heat seeking 
magic missiles. Since the Firebird set is not about buffing any particular skill, it's about applying the six-piece Firebird damage bonus, applying it as many times and as often as possible works in our favor here, so having a billion projectiles striking with the force of the six-piece Firebird damage buff is what we're looking for. And while this build won't top the wizard leaderboards for solo GR pushing, it is the best wizard build this season for solo speed greater rifts, that is XP farming, and it's the best wizard build for killing rift guardians in group play. And that takes us into the A tier, A as in actually great builds. These are only five GRs behind S tier. For the Barbarian, we have the Immortal King Hammer of the Ancients build that rises from the B tier thanks to how much it benefits from the Sanctified Whirlwind power, which sucks in all enemies into a super tight group. Hammer of the Ancients brings down a ton of damage in a relatively small area, so the ability to effortlessly group up screens of enemies into a small area and then bring down our hammers on them is an enormous boon. Now that said, there is a Sanctified Hammer of the Ancients skill, it makes your Hammer of the Ancients strike in all directions around you, spreading out that damage, and every 10th hit sends out a giant damaging shockwave pretty much across the whole screen. This is powerful, but for Greater Rift pushing, it doesn't beat the pixel-pulling power of the Whirlwind Sanctified power. But for speed content, when you don't have time to gather up two screens of enemies, then you want to go for the Hammer of the Ancient Sanctified Power, which kills things a lot faster. Then we also have the Whirlwind Barbarian in this tier, which remains in A tier. Ironically enough, because it doesn't benefit as much from the Whirlwind Sanctified Power as Hammer of the Ancients does. In fact, you even have the choice of not going with the Whirlwind Sanctified Power, and instead going for the Sanctified Wrath of the Berserker Power, which will double your damage. The Whirlwind Barb is the starter set for Barbarians this season, so Barbs get an excellent start. For Monks, the Raiment Generator build rockets up from C tier thanks to a massive boost from the Sanctified Way of the Hundred Fists power. It makes all the Way of the Hundred Fists attack use the second stage combo punch, which is roughly a doubling in our power, and then also lets us stack a 2% damage bonus up to 350 times, which is another 8 times damage multiplier. Raiment is also the starter set for monks this season, so if there ever was a time to go Raiment, it's now. However, this build still does remain really squishy and is not exactly a joy to play for a lot of people. Then, the Sunmuka Wave of Light build remains in A tier, but it is straddling the very top of A tier. It benefits hugely from the Sanctified Wave of Light power, which offers an incredible buff at the cost of making the build far clunkier. However, there is a stronger Wave of Light build for Monks. For Necromancer, the Legacy of Dreams Corpse Explosion build drops from S tier because it can only use the Sanctified Golem power, which helps with the speed version, but isn't really helpful for the pushing version. And then, near to the tier list, we have the Inarius Death Nova build, which has emerged thanks to buffs to the supporting items of Death Nova. It does use the Sanctified Death Nova power, which sends out Bone Spirits every so often, but this isn't much of a buff. There are also, however, much more powerful Death Nova builds for Necro. For the Wizard, we have the Legacy of Dreams Frozen Orb build that remains in A tier thanks to the Sanctified Arcane Orb power, generates additional Frozen Orbs. And we have the Legacy of Dreams Twister Wizard that drops down from S tier because it can only benefit from the mediocre Sanctified Storm Armor power, which plugs in a bit more damage now and then. For the Crusader, the Aegis of Valor Heaven's Fury Crusader has finally, finally, drop from S tier after being there for an eternity. And this is because it could only really benefit from the Sanctified Fists of the Heavens power, which will simply let you generate resource better. Again, we're assuming angels won't be overpowered. Then the Legacy of Nightmares Bombardment build can easily work in the Archangels. And while it was previously capping out at the very top of A tier, it stumbled quite a bit lower within the tier now. Again, assuming conservative power from the angels. For Witch Doctors, the Zunimasa Poison Dart build and the Aracure Spider build drop out of S tier, despite getting a decent boost from the Sanctified Horrify power, which doubles your damage, and this is simply because of how high S tier builds are pushing this season. Meanwhile, the Legacy of Nightmares Poison Dart build hangs on to A tier by incorporating the Sanctified Gargantuan power, which will automatically summon zombie dogs for us and make enemies hit by sacrifice take double damage. By taking the Provoke the Pack Rune, we can stack up to another 100% damage multiplier, but we do have to lose the Horrify skill to make room for sacrifice, but it's a sacrifice well worth taking. And that takes us to our number 9 build. 
the Akan Condemn Crusader, which rises all the way from C tier to A tier thanks to massive reworks to the Akan set that removes the cooldown from Judgment and makes attacks from Phalanx Avatars, reduce the cooldown of Akarat's Champion by half a second, and apply Condemn when attacking enemies that are under the effects of Judgment. So prior to this, this build would cast maybe half a dozen Condemns per second. Now you can get almost up to a hundred per second. This build was a fan favorite a long time ago. It's about time we see it reemerge in some way, and now it's got more booms than ever. On to number eight, the Demon Hunter Shadow Impale build, which rises from B tier thanks to the Sanctified Strafe power, plus an actual change to the Strafe skill that allows us to use it with a melee weapon. This completely changes the playstyle of Impale by turning it into a strafing build. As you're strafing, Impale daggers will be shooting out around you, because the Sanctified Strafe power makes you automatically shoot out your last non-channeled Hatred Spender while strafing. This makes us shoot out way more Impales than before, while also being able to work in buffs from channeling skills. That takes us to number 7, the Mundanugu Spirit Barrage Witch Doctor, which is a solid contender for the best Witch Doctor build of Season 27. It makes great use of the sanctified Haunt power to pixel pull enemies into a tight grouping, which greatly benefits the damage bursts of Phantasms. And since this is already the Bogodile power, if there are any upsets and Bogodile ends up being crazy strong, well, that just means this build will be even better. Now, the Zunimasa build may surpass this build in terms of absolute power, but Mundanugu is so much easier to play. And that takes us to S tier. S as in superlative. It's not always a joke. These are expected to be the most powerful builds of Season 27. For the Barbarian, we have the Raycor Boulder Toss build, which works in the Sanctified Wrath of the Berserker power to double its damage and remain in S-tier. And this is the only S-tier build that won't be part of our top 10. Not because it's not powerful enough, but simply because there are other S-tier builds that either have more exciting changes from past seasons, or otherwise make more interesting use of Sanctified powers, plus it's not even the strongest Barbarian build. So, that takes us to number 6, the Demon Hunter's Marauder Sentry build, which remains in S-tier, and will be the best Demon Hunter build of the season. It uses the Sanctified Cluster Arrow power, which boosts our damage by combining all of its explosive power into a single beam of Heavenly Light. This is not an enormous buff to the power of this build, but it's enough to keep it in S tier and let it retain its number 6 spot on our top 10 list, same as last season. On to number 5, the Necromancer's Rathma Army of the Dead build, which rises from A tier thanks to the rework of the Funerary Pick, which adds another 200 to 600% damage multiplier, depending on how many targets you're fighting, and makes it an especially great Rift Guardian killer. The Sanctified Army of the Dead power makes enemies around us constantly hit with Army of the Dead Unconventional Warfare, which is particularly helpful when fighting single targets. This is also the starter set for Necromancers of the season, and is one of the best starters of the season. That takes us to number 4, where we're going to have two builds that are pretty much tied. Two Wizard Meteor builds, the Legacy of Dreams version of Meteor, which rises all the way from D tier, and a Talrasha Meteor Wizard, which reappears on the tier list after having been bumped off of it ages ago, once it was obsoleted. And this is all thanks to huge buffs to the Meteor skill, including a stacking damage buff on the Smoldering Core, and the Mempo of Twilight Helm adding another multiplier while also granting the Meteor Shower Rune automatically. So if this operates the way it's theorized to operate, that is being able to select the Star Pack Rune and have it deliver a Meteor Shower's worth of Star Packs, then this is another insane damage multiplier. The Talrasha set also receives some much needed toughness buffs, and if the Mempo Power interacts the way we theorize, which early reports are suggesting yes, then Talrasha should be one of the best starter sets for Season 27. The Legacy of Dreams version of the build should in theory be more powerful by incorporating a reverse Archon playstyle, though it is more difficult to play and arguably a less pleasant playstyle for a lot of players. Both of these builds make use of the mediocre Sanctified Storm Armor power. That takes us to number 3 the Tragul and Legacy of Dreams Death Nova builds. The Legacy of Dreams version rises all the way from C tier into S tier, thanks to buffs to Death Nova supporting items, and aided only a little bit by the Death Nova Sanctified Power. The LOD version is just slightly weaker than the Tragul version, but is better at farming. The Tragul version is new to this list, thanks to a rework to the Tragul set this season that gives massive toughness and damage buffs. 
Tragul now rises from being a terrible set to a set that properly embodies the powerful being that he represents. This build is beastly and super easy to run. And that takes us to number two, rising all the way from ninth place in last season's top 10 list, the Legacy of Dreams Hammer of the Ancients Barbarian, which will be the best Barbarian build of season 27. As with the Immortal King Hammer of the Ancients build, this build greatly benefits from the sanctified whirlwind power. Pixel pulling enemies in and dragging them along with you to build up enormous density. All the density that you can dream of before you bring down your hammers. Then for speedruns, you want to swap to the Sanctified Hammer of the Ancients power, which spreads out our hammers in all directions around us, and every tenth hit sends out a huge shockwave that clears screens. And that takes us to number one, the build that retains its number one spot from last season's list, the Legacy of Dreams Wave of Light Monk. This is a case of the rich getting richer because the Sanctified Wave of Light power delivers an enormous power spike to this build, at the expense of making it clunkier to play. When you cast Wave of Light, you now instead summon a bell at the target location. And if you then hit that bell, then the bell will damage enemies around it. And you can have multiple bells summoned. So instead of directly hitting enemies with bells, you now lay down bells like traps and have to trigger them. This slows down the playstyle a lot, but for a massive damage payoff. For speed content though, you don't want to have this power activated at all because it slows you down way too much. And that's going to wrap up this video. But we'll remind you that you can find this tier list on maxroll.gg for easy reference and to check back maybe a few days into season to see if anything has changed. You can also find written guides to all these builds on maxroll. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more gaming content.